Last time on Left Behind. You know anything more about the shooter? Carpathia didn't die from a gunshot. The fact is, he missed. Autopsy's going on right now. We are bringing to the table the body of Nikolai Carpathia. Ah, what a botched job this is. Well, the gun did go off, but it was an accident. I was bumped. Tell me how you did it. The less you know, the less you have to answer for. David sent me all this stuff on a possible safe house. I can't sit here doing nothing. Based on The Indwelling, the seventh book in the best-selling series, Tyndale House Publishers proudly presents Episode 78 of the dramatic audio edition of Left Behind. A question regarding the transcript. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you make of this portion here? Yes, I saw that. He said something about doing all that he was asked. I assure you, Walter, the potentate was not addressing me. I understand that, sir. If he had been talking to me, it would indicate that he thought I had attacked him. As I said, I'm certain he was not. A non-issue, sir. You are not a suspect. And, Walter, it is your job to make sure it remains that way, given probable succession scenarios. I understand, sir. My focus is currently on his obsession with him. Uh, what does he call it here? Mm, the veil? I just don't know. I've read this thing now a dozen times and nothing clicks. It says, the veil. Was it rent in twain from the top to the bottom? Father, father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And then there's some uh, gurgling... McCollum. Oh, Mac, David, do you remember anything I can barely said about Nikolai's last words? Um, uh, something along the lines of, uh, with a wound like that, it would be uh, impossible to say anything? Yeah, 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 that, that's what I thought. Why, what's going on? Well, Moon's talking with Fortunato about more last words off the private transcript. Hmm. Uh, stuff that's pretty wild. Uh, okay, let's see. Cut us all that last words business. This man would not have been physically capable of saying a single word. Maybe they want to invent something for posterity, but no one had better ask me if it was possible. Oh, Mac, this is unbelievable. It just keeps getting weirder. Donna! Donna Clendon! Uh, 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 do I know you? Marv Barry. You've got to go. Hi, Marv! You've got to tell a girl when you get a makeover. You were supposed to meet me outside. I fell asleep, sorry. Don't turn around. There's a couple of guys in orange vests and radios headed our way. Just keep moving. I never heard from T. The guy in the tower said he won't be back until tomorrow. Wouldn't tell me where he went. What do you think that means? I don't know. You left it running? I wasn't planning on being here that long. Come on, let's get in and go. Come on! And Lucas showed up right when you needed him. I know. Sounds hard to believe. I wouldn't blame you if you thought I just made it up. Made to... it up? That would be a tough story to make up. So, I probably have no right to ask this. Would you be the first to forgive me? Forgiveness is something we all need, Ray. I know my reaction hey. was... you've done nothing like what I did. Granted, I didn't try to assassinate a world leader, but... I feel pretty bad about how I responded to you. I had no idea what you were going through. Fair enough, then. Were you? <sighs> what do we do now? We have to relocate as soon as possible. Where? Look out the window. Right there. Downtown Chicago? All GC management from director level and above. Please report immediately to the education... Oh, what's the thing I've got cooking now? Repeat. 
All DC management from director level and above, please report immediately to the Education Wing Theater. We need to move the start time to tonight. We could have medical services in place within the hour, Commander. So with the intense heat, I think we have to provide it. Thank you. From this diagram, you can see where the mourners will be led. The procession will come through the courtyard and up these stairs to the vacuum sealed casket. With the pedestal, it will be about 15 feet off the ground with stairs on either side. At this time, I would like you all to hear from Dr. Eikenberry. As a great admirer of the potentate, you can imagine the emotional task it was to prepare his body for burial. I have asked her to summarize the challenges she faced. Doctor? Thank you, Supreme Commander. This has indeed been a most difficult and emotional day for myself and my assistant. We treated the body of Nikolai Carpathia with utmost reverence and respect. As expected, the cause of death was severe brain trauma caused by a single bullet from a saber handgun. I'll spare you the grisly details, but because of the spinning bullet, the back of the neck and head were laid open, causing the greatest challenge for repair and reconstruction. We used staples and stitches, wax camouflage and putty, and a minimum of artificial hair. If I may add one more thing. There is recorded evidence that His Excellency's last words were an expression of forgiveness to the perpetrator of this heinous crime. Forgiveness has long been ascribed to the divine, and as a medical professional, I must tell you why I concur. There is no human explanation for the potentate's ability to speak at all, given the physical damage. Therefore, I am left with only one conclusion. Truly, this was a righteous man. Truly, this was the Son of God. Nobody thought he'd be back. D don't you know who I am? No, sir. I, I can't say that I do. You haven't seen me around here? You, you, you don't know I'm a friend of teeth? <laughs> uh, mm. He may not recognize you. Ah, my mistake. Listen, son, I have permission to take one of my associate's vehicles here, but he neglected to leave the keys with me. I need to hotwire the car, and I want to make sure you're okay with that. Um, I won't even be looking in your direction. <laughs> okay. Thanks. He doesn't trust you. Would you? I know you, and I don't trust you. Huh? We're not going straight to the safe house in broad daylight, are we? Of course not. We have to make a little stop first. Hello, Zeke. Well, hello there, Mr. S. What can I do for you? Oh, wait a second. You know me? Not till you spoke. Not a bad job, really. Looks European. Middle Eastern. Would have been my next guest. Like I say, not bad, but I would have got it eventually. Personally, I would have done something different with the eyebrows, but... Hey, what can I do for you? New ID for Leah. Okay. Mm. I'm thinking Jerry Seaver? Excuse me? How's Jerry Seaver sound? How's Jerry Seaver look? Mm, like this. Well, Zeke, that's not bad. She's just about my age, height, even the weight's right. I'm probably five or ten pounds less than her, but... Really? Yes. <laughs> well, there's a scale over there in the corner. <laughs> ha, of course, I haven't been exercising as much lately. You know, the only other difference is she's a blonde. Not sure how I would do that. No worries, madame. Leave that to Francois. We have just what madame needs. No. 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 Aha, Srebiet. Here you go. Work this stuff in for about 20 minutes during a hot bath. Uh, humidity seems to help. I'm feeling violated by this whole experience. Eh, don't worry about it. We're all friends here. Hey, you guys want a couple of soy burgers? I can whip them up quick. Actually, Zeke, that's okay. You sure? I got a fresh load of pickles. No, tempting, but we, we've got to keep moving. Uh, the rover's not exactly invisible out there. Suit yourself. They're not as bad as they sound. <laughs> well, don't take your word for it. We are going to need some food and a few other supplies. We're kind of on the move. GC getting close? Uh, we're not sure. Yeah, don't sweat it. We'll fix you up. What's wrong? Rich dental appliance. 
Oh, there. That feels better. Uh, I'm going to take the northern route. That'll give us a good look at any other traffic. Unless they're hidden. Not too many places to do that. You want to wait till dark? You're asking me? We both live or die by the decision. Yeah, that helps. Tion, it's Ray. She's where? Well, tell me she's... What about the radiation? Is it Chloe? Hang on. What did David say? Incredible. All right. I'll check back later. What? What? We're waiting till dark. Hang on. All right. So where are you headed now? Downtown. And keep your eyes peeled in case you were right about Tower Boy. Hello? Where are you? Dad! Where are you? Uh, the Palos area. I'm guessing where the Tri-State used to intersect Harlem. 95th? Yeah. What, how on earth did you get way down there? Dealing with the roads that are still drivable, Dad. It's not like you can hop on the Kennedy anymore. Okay, okay. So what now? You're going to go the rest of the way on foot? If I have to. That'll take hours. Well, what else have I got to do? At least wait for us. On foot, you'll <sighs> stick out like a sore thumb. Hey, you are back in charge, remember? What did she say? Yeah, she's a married adult, Leah. And her husband would appreciate it. Oh, my. Chloe. I'm here. Stay put until we can find you. We're not doing this until after dark. Cameron, what are you going to do? Turn me in? Abandon me? I'm... I cannot abide what I have done to my dearest friends. They, they died for me. Would you have done the same for them? I, I'd like to think I would... I should now. Stop talking like that. You think I'm not sincere? The only thing standing in the way are you and 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 my cowardice. Cowardice? Cowardice? You planned the assassination for months and pulled it off flawlessly. Right or wrong, that was not cowardice. I, I'm a fool and a coward and, and the blood of my own people is is on my hands. Okay, here's the problem. Because the GC are already announcing that you're dead, they can kill you without any explanation. Let them. Let them. I deserve it. But what happens when your victim comes back to life? You're talking crazy. It's going to happen, Heim. The man was in my lap when I thrust the blade into his brain. For all practical purposes, he, he was dead Be before he hit the floor. You can't really believe he's coming back. Life. What if he does? Ah! Uh, humor me. What if Carpathia comes back to life? Then I guess you'll be all right. I'll be wrong, and you'll win. Come on. Pretend it actually happens. What then? I find it useless to ponder I impossibilities. And that's why we've never gotten through to you? You've, you've gotten through more than you know. I have come from atheism to, to agnosticism, and, and finally... To a belief in God. You believe? In God, yes. Too many things have, have happened that can be explained no other way. Then why not Carpathia's resurrection? You can't tell me that, that you actually believe this. I can, and I do. I was there when Eli and Moisha came back to life. After three days in the hot sun. You believe what you want to believe. Oh, man. Look at the time. I wish it would get dark. We gotta get out of here. You should leave me, young friend. Pretend you never met me. Nope, can't do that. We go back way too far. You owed an article. We didn't have to become friends. But we did. And now I care about you. You, you. you think you have nothing else to live for. True, true enough. But you do, you do. You're afraid I will die in unbelief and go to hell. Ah, and this possibility doesn't concern you? I like to believe death is the end. But it's not. Listen to the new believer full of knowledge. You can't know. I'm... If all this stuff amazed you and made you believe God's real, why shouldn't heaven and hell be real? Just think about it. I don't want to think about it. I want to die. You wouldn't if you believed what I believe. I know. All right. I know. Stop 
talking. All right, I will. But just consider... Please! Ah, <laughs> you see? There is a God. The patron saint of phones has saved me. This is Buck. Buck? Oh, Buck, is it really you? Uh, Hattie? Hattie, where are you? Colorado. You want a secure phone? Oh, that's one thing I took with me. I got it from a friend of yours on the inside. I'm listening. The GC think I'm dumber than I am, Buck. They released me from prison and gave me money, and then followed me here. I know they were disappointed I didn't go to Israel, but I wanted to see if any of my family were left. And? They're gone. All of them. Oh, hell. You know where they hope I'll go now. Exactly where I hope you won't go. Buck, I have nowhere else to turn. I'd love to help you, Hattie, but I'm kind of crossed up at the moment myself. I understand. <laughs> I had my chance. No, 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 that's not it. It's, I... it's all right, Buck. You don't owe me anything. It has nothing to do with owing you. Look, would you please tell everyone that I never told where they were? Hattie, you as much as put Bo and Ernie on our doorstep... No, no, I, I mean at the prison, Buck. I'd never give you guys up. What are you going to do now? I don't know. Maybe I'll just run these goons on a wild goose chase. Heaven knows I have enough money. They're not going to let you out of their sight. Yeah, they're watching my car right now. They think I'm eating. Oh. Can you slip away? No, oh, it's too open here. I've got to get somewhere with more people. Maybe I could go to Denver. Well, be careful, huh? Really? You think? Hattie. No, I... Oh. I didn't mean that, Buck. I was just trying to be funny. That's the problem with this world. Nothing's funny anymore. Yeah. Well, listen, if you can shake them and you're sure, try me again. We may not be at the same place, but if it's possible, well, we'll try to help you out. You would, wouldn't you? Of course we would. You know that. Yeah. Look, I'd better go. Hattie, uh, you heard about Ray? Yeah, I heard got to be a frame-up. He probably wasn't even there. Oh, he was there, but he didn't do it. Well, you don't have to convince me. I know Rayford better than that. Listen, just tell everybody I'm safe and... Well, thanks for everything. Hattie, we all love you. You know that. We're praying for you. I know, Buck. Thanks. I gotta wait for a couple minutes. Mm-hmm. So good to see you, honey. Have a seat. How'd the meeting go? Well, that's what I'm working on. Eikenberry's announcement about the autopsy was so different than what she said in the morgue. Until the assassination, yeah. Okay. What are you looking well, for? I, I Fortunato's meeting with Eikenberry. Why, you think... Well, she changed her story. And I think Fortunato had something to do with it. I kept the camera right on. When he calls me and I gotta be prepared. The thing I'd ever done. You know the Who's the other guy with Leon? I don't know. I think it's... It's one of the cameramen from the gala. The real murder happened right below me, and I saw it happen. And you discussed this with whom? Um, Security Director Moon. He was asking questions, so... And he's the only one? Yes, sir. Margaret, would you send Mr. Moon in, please? Yes, sir. Look into my eyes, son. You trust me, do you not? Of course. When Mr. Moon gets here, I'm going to tell you both what you saw and what you will remember. But, sir, I know what... You understand that I will soon become the new potentate, do you not? I assumed that. Yes, sir. You did. Do not just nod. Tell me. Yes. You understand that my new title will be Supreme Potentate and that I must also be addressed as Excellency? Yes, Commander. Would you like to kneel before me? Yes, Commander. Commander, I... What the devil? What's he doing on the floor? He was just about to tell me what was on the video disc brought back from Jerusalem. Well, you've seen it, haven't you? Of course, but it seems there's a discrepancy between what he and I saw and what you apparently saw. Uh Oh? Yes. Return to your chair and tell your boss what you saw. I heard the gunshot and saw the potentate's head snap back. I get it. This is a joke. Now the gun killed him? We all know that's not true. It's true. Mr. Moon, 
Lean across the table here and let me see your eyes. My eyes are fine. Moon, are you listening? Yes. Are you really listening? I have your attention now. Do I not? You do, sir. Walter, you understand that I will soon become the new potentate. Do you not? (laughs) Dad, I'm so glad to see you. It is you, isn't it? (laughs) Yes. Chloe? This is more dangerous than staying put. Dad, we we just needed a new place. I'm tired of just sitting there. I understand, but this is crazy. Hello, this is, um, Jerry Seaver. Okay. No, wait! Who was it? I think it was Ming. I'm sure of it. She hung up. Hit the call back. I'll take it out to the car. Excuse me. I'm, I'm, wait a minute, slow down. So, so tell me, we get to America, and what? I'm, I'm holed up with Sion and, and you? Yeah, something like that. Perfect, perfect. I won't need to kill myself. You'll both talk me to death. Uh, wait a minute, stop, stop, wait a minute. There's nothing we could say that you haven't heard already. Now, there's the truest thing... I've heard all day. The truest thing you heard today was that you are lost. I'm lost? Yes. You don't think I know I'm lost? That's the one thing I'm certain of. Why do you think I would sacrifice myself to to murder the greatest enemy my country has ever had? I did not expect to survive. I was ready to go. Why? Because I am lost. Nothing to live for. Nothing. Yes, I am lost. Haim, you don't need to be. Ming, it's Leah. Don't hang up. It sounded like you. But who's Jerry Seaver? Oh, just one of my international fugitive aliases. If it weren't for the intrigue, what would be the appeal? Hey, you should see what I'm about to do to my hair. I don't know how you keep your sense of humor. You handle it well, Ming. I called with a question. Your friend Williams? Buck, yes. Where's his family? Ah, west, somewhere. Why? There was lots of talk at Buffer today about what happened to Dr. Rosenweig's house and his people. They don't know where he is, but they're making it look like everybody died in the fire. What's that got to do with Buck and his family? They're saying the same thing will happen to William's people if they don't give him up. His relatives don't even know where he is. He'd never give them that kind of information. Leah, this was supposed to happen right away. Torture, dismemberment. They tell her they are killed. Then comes the fire to cover it up. What do I do? Just have your friend check on his family. Maybe he can warn them in time. I'll do that. Thanks. So how are you? Ready to come see us? I am okay for now. My family... Whoa! Hang on! What's going on? Uh, Ming, can you still hear me? Barely. I've got company. Couple of GC. If you need to hang up... Call Ray Steele's number if I get caught. He'll answer as Marvin Berry. Got it. They're leaning against the car. Where are you? Floor of the front seat. They don't see you? Don't think so. What? You need me to call Rayford? Your positioning system break the... Leah! Hey, there's somebody in there. Hey, but what you doing down there? Leah, are you all right? Left Behind, the dramatic audio series, is based in part on the book The Indwelling by Tim LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins and has been adapted for radio by Chris Fabry, music by Steve Wick, sound design by Glenn West, directed and produced by Todd Bastide. Left Behind, the dramatic audio series, is a production of Gap Digital and Tyndale House Publishers. Thank you for listening.